Welcome to today's edition of Power Links. I am Bolanle Oluchi Babalola. Many professional bodies and organizations in Nigeria have over the years entrenched knowledge sharing as part of their core mandates of promoting societal growth, development, and well-being of the people through such avenues as meetings, seminars, and conferences, as well as other engagements to underscore their mission and vision. One that fits this description is by the Akure Sunshine Branch of the Nigerian Society of Engineers as it engaged stakeholders in the second 2017 Distinguished Engineering Lecture, which topic of conversation is Engineering Infrastructure Development, a panacea for industrial revolution in a changed environment. Engineering and the rich tradition of the people can rightly be described as artistic because of the beauty they manifest. But the event is not about showcasing the rich dances of the Ondo people. It's an intellectual driven enterprise to chart the way forward for Nigeria's electricity industry. No wonder the cream, deal cream of the Sunshine Branch and the guests converged on the multi purpose event center, Ondo State Development and Property Corporation, to meet minds on the issues of the lecture. Among the high-profile guests is the Deputy Governor of the State, Agbola Ajayi, who represented Governor Oluwaru Timi, Akira Dolu, and the former Managing Director of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company Limited, James Abiodun Olotu, and top officials of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSE. To set the ball rolling, Chairman of NSE, Akura Branch Engineer Olorun Toba Williams Abe, who acknowledges the excellent attendance by stakeholders at the event, says it is to promote the professional capabilities of members. It is important to note that engineers play a vital role in policy formulation, advice on technical issues and infrastructure development in the social economic development of any nation. It has since been postulated that a country that failed to exploit the vast knowledge and expertise of our engineers, we always find itself at the back bench of underdevelopment. The choice of our guest lecture is based on the above fundamentals. After due consultation with all relevant stakeholders, that engineer effect on the was approved to do justice to the topic, power infrastructure development as a panacea for industrial revolution. Deputy President of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Adekunle Mukwola, commends the Sunshine Branch for the choice of topic for the lecture, describing it as timely. He speaks on expectations as he reminds stakeholders about the importance of alimentation towards addressing the challenges. It is just not enough for us to sit down and be listening to lectures by competent, experienced, engineers year in year out without putting in place the master plan for addressing the agony the lecturers you know gave to us during their lecture and the opportunities they are throwing up to us for our well-being and enterprise and practice improvement of practice and the pursuit of excellence that they throw at us whenever they deliver those lectures. Our lecturer, for example, I know, engineer Ife, has spent so much time and energy 
preparing this lecture. And so it is, it behoves on us to be able now to sit down after he, we have listened to his lecture to ensure that we now take, distill them, chew them, and really bring out the meat of it and make a plan of implementation for the benefit of Ondo State and Nigerians in general. This is very important. This is the reason why distinguished lectures are held. An appeal for engagement of engineers in nation building. The appeal I want to give to His Excellency, and of course, sir, the Deputy Governor here present, is that please use Nigerian engineers resident in this state. I know many of them, they are so experienced and highly resourceful and very hardworking. There is no project, there is no thought or imagination for the better life and engineering of, uh, of Ondo State citizens and the well-being of the citizens of this state that our engineers here cannot deliver. And their involvement must be at inception. It will be cheaper, and you'll be able to maintain it, and you will not have headache, and you can sleep well. And I want to say, sir, the Nigerian Society of Engineers has in its memory the disciplinary committee. If there's any of our members that is found wanting, please report them. We, we are assuring you that that rotten apple will be taken away from the barrel so that it will not damage or corrupt the good ones. There may again be every reason to say that engineering and culture are interrelated and the saying that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy may also be apt in the context of this occasion. The distinguished lecturer is one of her own at the top echelon of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company Limited, NDPHC. And well, it is the moment everyone has been anxiously waiting for. The distinguished lecturer a thoroughbred engineer and executive director, engineering and technical services. Engineer Ifeolua Oyedele took to the podium and sets the tone. We have before us Ifeolua Onushola Oyedele. He was born at a time that he had to be born to the family of late Chief Matthew Olakunle Oyedele, a renowned educationist, community leader, and a famous disciplinarian. And also Mrs. Comfort Ileola Oyedele, a retired school teacher. As a child, I never wanted to be anything else but an engineer. 
My mother would often regale whoever cared to listen of how I would dismantle gadgets in the house, radios, television, telephone, and so many things. I would dismantle them. Unfortunately, I would be unable to put them together. Who be tied any clock, radio, or whatever that had the misfortune of joining a very limited family assets at the time. This young man then will not be able to put Humpty Dumpty together again. My love for the engineering profession was so strong that I could dear my highly revered father. And those who know my father here will know that he was, he was, he was revered, he was feared. Nobody could, I mean, he was, he was just awesome. It was so bad that for two years, my father refused to pay my school fees. Why? Chief Matthew Olakule Idele, member of the British Empire, refused to pay my fees because I had the audacity to change my course of study from engineering physics in the University of Ifeb, now Abafemi Aulo University, and secured admission into, into the University of Lagos to read electrical engineering. As an engineer in politics, the distinguished lecturer went back memory lane and unearthed the history of electricity power generation in Nigeria. Quoting reputable sources, engineer Oyedele says, power generation started in Nigeria around 1898, 15 years after its introduction in England. Some accounts state that it began in 1896, while others chose 1898. If you choose 1896, it was, it was just 13 years after England um, had electricity. But if you choose uh, 1898, then it is 15 years after, after its introduction in England. I obtained that information from the first electricity, that the first electricity utility company, known as Nigerian Electricity Supply Company, was established in 1929 in Nigeria from the account of Claudius A. Awoshokwe, Professor of Electrical Electronics Engineering. Electricity does continue to draw a great attention from industrialists, the labor union, the activists, the private sector, and the political class. Any politician who is able to successfully tackle the issue of an availability of electricity supply is likely going to gain hero status in Nigeria and in, in the rest of the world too. There were subsequent developments which clearly shaped the power sector within the circumstances of time, planning and resources at the disposal of successive governments. Notably, the collaboration between the Niger Dams Authority and Electricity Corporation of Nigeria promoted the vast nature of the electricity grid power system, which began in 1966. But the game changer was the merger of ECN and NDA in April of 1972, which crystallized into National Electric Power Authority, NEPA. While the network continued to grow, the federal government began to strategize to increase capacity. But as it progressed, it became apparent 
the organization could not cope with the rapidly increasing needs of the nation. Subsequently, the nomenclature changed and some initiatives were injected as Power Holding Company of Nigeria, PSCN, came into being. The arrangement was inadequate and not meeting expectations. Hence, the advent of another reform in 2001 with the promulgation of the National Electric Power Policy, whose goal is the establishment of an efficient electricity market. The unbundling of PSCN is a bold step intended to improve the stability of electricity supply, create an efficient mechanism for the operations of the sector, and eliminate corruption often associated with public organizations. In 2004, December, the federal government inaugurated the National Integrated Power Project to fast track the upgrading of available electricity capacity in the country. Two years later, Niger Delta Power Holding Company Limited was incorporated as an intervention agency to manage NIPP. If we compare what has happened and what, what, what existed before NIPP came into the picture, pre-2000, we had only 4,495 kilometers of 330 KV lines. Post NIPP, we have 6,932. That is an improvement of about 46%. I, I'm sure you should be clapping for us. I'm sure you be, you be clear. On 132 KV lines, we have pre-2000, 5,430. Today, we have 7,036 kilometers, and we have added 13%. On 132 stroke, 33 KV transformer capacity, 5,700 MVAs. Today, we have 11,118 MVA, an improvement of 42%. On 330-132 kV capacity transformers, we have 5,300 MBAs, and today we have 11,590 MBAs, 93% improvement. On distribution projects as well, on 33 kV transmission lines, we have increased what we have by about 5%, that is, this was this study is based on two years ago, 11 kV transmission lines by 15%, 415 kV transmission lines by 6%, 33 stroke 11 kV substations by 43%, 33 and 11 by um, 0.415 kV substations by 26%, 33 and 11 stroke 0.415 kV substations by 163%, and 33 kV stroke 11 kV substations by 25%. In 2004, the federal government established the National Integrated Power Project, NIPP, and two years later, under the management of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company Limited, the investors are federal governments with 47% equity, while the 36 states and the 774 local government areas, as well as the federal capital territory, own the balance of 53%. The diligent implementation of NIPP has produced 10 power plants with installed capacity of more than 4,000 megawatts, 29 lots of transmission infrastructure, including substations and lines, 43 lots of distribution stations, and 7 lots of gas facilities. NIPP NDPSC functions on a structured board comprising directors under the chairmanship of Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo one governor, each representing the six geopolitical zones, and some ministers. The management, on the other hand, comprises the managing director, who is also the chief executive officer and executive director, engineering and technical services, and executive director, administration and finance. Under these arrangements, the NIPP is touted as the largest infrastructure intervention in Africa and possibly the most successful government-owned project, execution machinery, with reflection of how well the three tiers of government can collaborate and jointly finance a project for the common good. With enormous work and commitments in the power sector, following sustained reforms, stakeholders agree the place of the electricity supply is the bedrock of Nigeria's economic growth, wealth creation, and improving the standard of living of the citizenry. 
However, as a nation craves for the best of conditions, there are fundamental limitations across the value chain which mitigation should include adopting cost-reflective tariff to encourage investment, adequate enabling environment, and continuous funding to tackle challenges of infrastructure. Others are training of manpower, gas development, and diversification of energy sources to take electricity to renewed communities among many interventions. It delivered a very good uh, lecture, rolling out a lot of investments that the government made into the electricity uh, area. But why he did that, he was expecting the audience to applaud him. But nobody did it. The reason was that with all the investment, we, Nigerians, have not witnessed any change or drastic change in the output. We are still short of what we thought should be. And because of this, I am saying that we are still asking that the federal government should invest more in the area of electricity generation and transmission. The distinguished lecturer appreciates what he describes as the genuine determination to change the fortunes of Nigeria by tackling the most debilitating issues of corruption in the society. I want to call on the federal government to please review, review the disco policy and the privatization in the power sectors. It's not just, it's not a magic. They cannot offer what they don't have. Nigeria should invest more on generating power first. Why, why do you want to sell what you don't have? For the past uh, five years, on those south where I come from, we don't have lights. We are appealing to the federal government to look at the present status of the discos. They don't have the capacity to do the job. And once we know this, you don't have to suffer the citizens. Just change the system and let, let's, let's think of how to generate more current before you can think of to distribute and sell. Our committee is actually public lecture committee of the society and the success of the 2017 then uh, is a source of great joy to us and it's also as a result of the uh, collaboration and the support that we have from members who believe in the rationale behind the program in terms of uh, a form of capacity building and uh, also tapping into the wealth of experience of accomplished engineers that are renowned and uh, so far so good. We can say that indeed the objectives of the program have been fully achieved. Dell is distinguished engineering lecture and is actually captured to attract distinguished engineers in the society that have made the mark in this present profession. In the branch we have done about four, is the fourth one now. We have brought in distinguished engineers and the reason behind it is we want them to come around, share their experience in this profession. Where are the younger ones to be able to learn? This is Power Links, and thank you for watching today's edition. Remember, you can always interact with us and send us feedback on the following platforms on your screen. I remain yours, Polanle Oluchi Babalola. Thank you for watching. <laughs>